Second Chronicles, the first chapter, and then the next verse will be in Matthew 7. So we have two scriptures for tonight. Um, Second Chronicles, first chapter, starting at the sixth verse. And it reads, And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was by the tabernacle of meeting. And he offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said unto him, Ask, what shall I give you? Verse 8. And Solomon said unto God, You have shown great mercy to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord, let your promise to David, my father, be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me the wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this great people of yours? Verse 11, then God said unto Solomon, because this was in your heart and you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked for long life, but you have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may be able to judge my people over whom I have made you king. 12. Wisdom and knowledge are now granted unto you and I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had who were born before you, nor shall any after you have the light. Tonight, as we look into the scripture in Second Chronicles and we begin to talk about Solomon, I want us to think around the power of the ask, the power of the ask. And so here we see Solomon went up to the altar. So as he was getting ready to establish his kingdom, he set out to do a burnt offering. And it said on the offering, he offered a thousand burnt offerings. He went to the bronze altar and offered a thousand burnt offerings. And what was powerful about that was no matter how far we come, no matter what position we get, we will never be too far or too elevated that we can't go to the altar. And even in our own lives, we have to have ourselves in a place of humility where we're able to go to the altar of God. And so even though he was named king, he still wanted to give an excellent offering unto the Lord. And then it said after this offering was given, that night, that same night, God appeared unto him. So after the sacrifice was given, God himself appeared to Solomon. And he told Solomon, ask, what shall I give you? He told Solomon, I need you to ask me for what you want, man. I need you to ask me for what you, you have garnered my attention. I have now come down to sup with you. Now I need you to ask people of God, when God visits us with an ask, we need to have an answer prepared. We need to have the expectation that when we sacrifice and when we are doing the will of the Father in the work of the Lord, that he is going to visit us. And when he visits us, he's going to ask us, what is our ask? And people of God, we can't sit in the presence of God and say, oh, I don't know. So I want us to be thinking about the power of ask. And when it's your turn for your visitation with God, what is going to be your ask of him. God said unto Solomon, what shall I give you? And Solomon said back to God. He didn't say, I don't know. He didn't say, um, I ain't never thought about that before. He didn't say, um, let me talk to somebody and get back to you. He said, I know that you've shown mercy to my father and you've made him a king, but now 
please establish your promise to David. So he started out with the promise that God had already made to his father. He asked for it to be established. And he said, Lord, you have given me, you have made me ruler. You have made me king over your people. And it's a lot of them. He said, they're like the dust of the earth. He said, but please, I am asking you now to give me wisdom and knowledge. And we know that he asked for wisdom, but in order to execute wisdom, you must also have knowledge because wisdom and knowledge work together. When I know something, that means I know what it is. I can identify it. I I can name it. I can recall it. I can quantify it. When I have knowledge, I have information. So knowledge is not enough in itself. You also need wisdom, especially as we enter into this new year, we're going to need wisdom coupled with knowledge because what wisdom does wisdom now moves us from just a place of having information unto what to do with the information wisdom now tells us how to move wisdom now gives us a blueprint on how to make the transaction on where to invest on where to plant seed, on how to govern. Wisdom gives us the know-how. So it gives us the ability to execute what we know. It takes the knowledge from being information to being operational. It makes it and turns it into action. It is what separates someone from being an expert, from being a novice. Wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the thing that God gives his people that causes them to stand out. When someone is wise, they are thinking from a different perspective because they have the perspective of God. Wisdom is a thing that God says that it is something you can ask me for and I will continue to give it to you liberally. And if it is something that we must ask for, that lets us know that it's not something that everyone gets or everyone is operating in. If we have to ask for it, it lets us know that it's something that we should desire from God, his wisdom. When we ask God for his wisdom, like Solomon did, it says, I need your wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before his people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Solomon understood the assignment. This is what the young people say. I understood the assignment. And when somebody understands the assignment, that means that they can execute it well. That means that there is no confusion around what I'm supposed to do. Because remember, wisdom gives you what to do. He said, Lord, I need this. Because I need to know how I can go out and come in. I need to know how I'm going to judge your people. He understood the assignment because he understood that even though he was a king, he was only a steward. He understood the assignment because he knew that stewardship was in his hand. He knew that even though he was king, that those people did not belong to him. He understood that those people belong to God. He understood that he was just a worker, a servant, a steward over the master's people. How many times have we seen people get into positions of leadership and governance and they begin to think that they got that themselves. They begin to think that they got there and now because they are in leadership, they are no longer in stewardship. They are no longer a servant. Now we have Solomon who is king 
and he still recognizes and humble himself before God and says, Lord, I need your knowledge and wisdom because I don't even know how to come out and go in. This is a great multitude of people. These are your people. And I need to know how I can judge them, how I can rightly divide their issues, how I can be able to do this job in excellence, how I can be able to take this seriously. Lord, I want you to know that this promotion that you have given me, I take it seriously. Lord, I need you to know that it is my job and it is my desire to walk in excellence. Lord, I know that my father was a great king, but in his own right, but in my right as the successor, as Solomon, Lord God, I need wisdom and knowledge. Lord, I don't want to just go by the fact that I seen my daddy do it. So I think I can do it. I don't just want to shoot from the hip and think that because I seen others do it and it look easy that it's going to be easy for me. No, Lord, I humble myself and I ask for your wisdom and your knowledge so that I may be able to judge and discern correctly so that I may be able to steward this next level that you have given me so that I may be able to steward this next dimension of revelation you have given me so I may be able to steward this next level of blessings that you have given me and not fumble them and look like a fool because I have thought of myself in my own glory and not have humbled myself before the throne of grace. Solomon said, I need to be able to judge them. He was speaking to leadership and governance. When you have a position of leadership, it is not to be taken lightly. It is a, it is a position of stewardship that you must ask God at every level. Lord, how can I judge this people? What is the proper way for me to enter and exit? How do I go out and come in? How do I entreat them? How do I greet them? I'm going to need wisdom and knowledge. Every time my position changes, I need a new set of wisdom and knowledge. Because Solomon had a set of wisdom and knowledge being the son of the king. He knew about the palace. He knew about the kingdom, but he didn't know about the seat. When we occupy the seat, there is another level of responsibility and stewardship that goes with it that I didn't have when I was just in the courtyard or when I was just at the king's table or when I was just a part of the king's cabinet. There is a different level of responsibility, leadership, and governance when you actually have to sit in the seat and govern. When your word becomes bond, when people are looking for you, looking at you to make the next decree, when what you pronounce goes out over the land, And when when the king releases something, it cannot be taken back. So he must be able to release in wisdom and knowledge and not in haste because the lives of the people in his in his kingdom depend on it. Verse 11, then God said unto Solomon, because this is in your heart. What is this? The spirit of the servant, the spirit of stewardship, the spirit of humility. The spirit of humility is opposite of the spirit of this age, which is pride. Pride says, my daddy did it so I can too. Pride says, I know what it looks like. I seen people do that before. How hard can it be? Pride says I can rely on myself. Pride says I can rely on my money. Pride says I can rely on my intellect. Pride says I can rely on my network and my connections. Pride does not give way to humbling ourselves and at the feet of God, giving a sacrifice so that we may be able to ask him how to govern so that our hearts may be in a place where we want to do right by God. What was in his heart? He wanted to do right by God, not by himself, but by God, because he recognized that he was in a stewardship position over God's people. 
He said, because this was in your heart and you have not asked me for riches or wealth. Because when we have an audience with God, if all we can tell him is we want to be a millionaire, that lets him know what's in our heart. If we have a, a audience with God and all we can tell him is, Lord, make me wealthy. That lets him know what's in our heart. He said, because you have, because you could have asked me for anything. I beseech you. I came to you. You could have asked me for anything. I am the God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I am the God where nothing is impossible. I am the God who in heaven, the streets are made of gold. I am the God who can give you anything you want. But because you didn't ask for the common things. Because you didn't ask for riches and wealth to make your life comfortable. But because you asked for wisdom that you may govern rightly. He said you did not ask for wealth. You did not even ask for honor. Lord, I just need people to, to put some respect on my name. Lord, I just need to be honored. Lord, the people, people gonna respect who I am. People need to honor me. I just need to have clout. Lord, if I can, if I can finally get some clout, if I can finally be noticed, Lord, just, just put me in a place where I'm noticed. He said, you didn't even ask me for the life of your enemies. This is giving us a window to the type of prayers that people pray to God. This is giving us a window to the type of ass that God receives. So what God was saying was these is the top five that people be coming at me with. Are these the top five that you go to God with? Do you constantly ask God for wealth and riches? Do you constantly ask God to put you in a powerful position so that people can honor you and look up to you because you, you, you need to be placed on a pedestal? Do you constantly ask God for the destruction of your enemies? Uh-uh, God, because they don't know who they messing with because I'm the chosen priesthood. Uh-uh, God, I'm, I'm a child of the king. Uh-uh, they keep coming at me. The haters is here. The haters is here. Lord God, take them out. He say, nor have you even asked for long life. Lord, I just want to be here to see my grandkids get, get grown. Lord, I just asked for long life. Lord, I just asked for long life. So God has given us a glimpse to his top, his top nominated request that he receives from people. When they say, what would you have me to do? What are you beseeching the king for? What are you beseeching God for? People want riches and wealth. People want honor. People want the destruction of their enemies and people want long life. But when we look at all of those categories, they all were birthed from a heart of selfishness. They all were birthed from a place of singularity. They all were birthed from a place of what I want and what God can do for me. They all were birthed from a place of if this is done, then I can live comfortably. None of them were birthed from a place of leadership. And one thing about leadership, leadership should always be about the protection, the governance, and the rightly judging of the people that are under your stead. Leadership is never about what you can surmise from the people you lead. Leadership is never about what I can get from them because you were placed as a leader to be a steward for them. Riches and wealth and honor and the life of the people coming against me and, and just let me live long. God says, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting you not to ask me for one of them because pretty much all of, all of the stuff people is praying for fall in these categories. They want me to take somebody out. They, they want me to, they want me to give them long life. They, they all, they want riches. They want the million. Now they asking for the billion. 
But Solomon, you have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself. You could have asked me for wealth and God would have gave it to him. He could have asked him for honor and God would have gave it to him. He could have asked him for the life of his enemies and God would have gave it to him. He could have asked him for long life and God would have gave it to him. But he didn't ask for the common thing. When we have an audience with the God of heaven, we don't have to ask for the common thing. Let me help you. Riches and wealth is common in the currency and in the kingdom of God. Long life is common to an eternal God. The destruction of your enemies is common to the God who is a champion. Honor is common to the God whose name is hallowed above all names. So these are common things, but they absorb 80% of our prayers. But I adjure you on the night if you begin to ask God for the uncommon thing. If you begin to ask him for the greater thing, for wisdom and knowledge, that we may be able to do the assignment and calling on our lives. For wisdom and knowledge on how to navigate the sign and the, 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 the calling on our life. Lord, give me the wisdom and the knowledge on how to navigate this gift, on how to navigate this call, on how to navigate the weight of glory that you have given me. When we ask for that thing, that we may judge his people who he has made us king. Because remember, the calling is what he has given us. He made him king. He has given us the call that is on our life. He says, so because you ask for that, because you want to please me, because in your heart is the heart of a true leader, I'm going to grant you wisdom and knowledge. But as a bonus, I'm going to throw in the common things as well. I'm going to throw in riches and wealth and honor. And you're going to have so much. You will have more than all of the kings who had come before you. And even the people that come after you. Because you honor the time of your ask. When we look at the book of Matthew, in Matthew 7, he says, Ask and ye shall receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened unto you. When we are asking God, when we have his ear, when we are seeking God, because we are seeking his face and his ways and 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 who he is when we are knocking when we are chasing after god we want to make sure that our heart posture is in the right place we want to make sure that we are repentant of pride we want to make sure that we are coming from a place of humility we want to make sure that the gifts calls and talents that he has given us that we are governing them properly that we are able to have wisdom and knowledge in those areas that he has given us clarity and insight so that when the wealth comes so that when the riches come so that when when the honor comes, we will be able as people of God to navigate that space in excellence and we will be able to bring glory back to his name because people will not see anybody who have done the job quite like us. They will not have seen anybody who have executed in excellent quite like us. They will not have seen anybody who has had the wisdom quite like us. And when God puts us in that place, we will be able to divert the honor to him because that is where it belongs. People of God, we must ask, we must seek, we must knock, but we must also remember 
that when God asks us, what can he do for us? We must check the conditions of our heart to make sure that we are asking from a high place and not a common place. Amen and amen exciting things on the horizon and welcome to the solutions family i created this channel with you in mind i can't wait to begin sharing with you all my prayer is that you receive relevant solutions for everyday life see you soon love ebb